Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today I've got a real treat for you. I'm going to be doing a playthrough of The Seventh Continent doing the Voracious Goddess Curse. Now I think I'm going to do this playthrough a little bit differently than any other one on my channel. Most of them I would do the full playthrough in one night or maybe two nights and then post it up and make any notes as we go. But I think because this one can kind of just continue going. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play for a little bit. Then I'm going to stop. I'm going to edit, upload it to YouTube. And then I'm going to ask you guys what I should do next. And then we can correct errors. It means that this playthrough will probably last a little bit longer. And I'm actually probably going to have other playthroughs that will go on in between them. But then that way we can keep coming back to this and you guys can help me with it. I'm, I'm experimenting here because I, I got some feedback that the channel is doing a great, doing, doing well, but sometimes people would like to be able to interact and make decisions. And this is a way that you guys can help me. And also, <laughs> this game, I just don't have that amount of time in one night to be able to play it all and record it all. I mean, it could take four hours to get through this curse. And I kind of want to do a full curse with you guys, but then maybe it'll take us a month. And it'll be fun. And you'll see other playthroughs. And then in the middle of it, all of a sudden, another one will come out. And then you guys can give me more suggestions. Do note, though, and I'm putting it right now. Spoiler, spoiler. This is going to be a spoiler, a uh, spoiler playthrough. And just so you know, I, am put, I did put in the Path of Repentance cars. It says you can mix them in, so I did. It added one of each of these region types and another curse, but we're not doing that curse, so that shouldn't matter. But you might see cards from that. I don't have the expansion cards that just add more stuff. Uh, uh, I don't have that. I just have the base game. Also, if you want to see another playthrough, check out Doug Herrings, and then I think Slicker Dips is planning on doing one. I voted to see him do one, so he will also be doing a playthrough, I believe. I don't know how much and how he's going to do it, but yeah, feel free to check those out. Without further ado, let's have Dimitri and Keelan start their adventure. Currently, as you can see with our map, we look like we're starting on a small island, and then we have to move off of it to go up. I think that's what this map is telling us, right? I don't know. <laughs> so an idea would be to start by doing a Pathfinder action and flip this card. But there's this cliff here that we can maybe examine. Um, that icon means go see or investigate, and we could do that as well. So I think... To start with, because Dimitri is a little more adventurous than, than Keelan, we're going to have Dimitri uh, go and investigate this cliff. To do this investigate action, he has to draw one or more action cards from the action deck. And remember, that action deck is limited. We have 35 basic ones plus the five from each character um, specific cards, so there's a total of 45 cards in there. And when that runs out, then we have a very good chance that we're going to lose. <laughs> So we always need to be careful with how much we want to use. But I think drawing one action card is not terrible. So let's go ahead and do that. Of course, before doing that, I should mention, you see how it says zero stars? We don't need any successes here to do this. This would be a great time to draw a curse card. Let's flip this top card and see what we get. Ooh, the woven cord. So this card will go to our hand because we only drew one card. It looks like it's an item. It would cost us two plus cards, uh, action cards, to be able to make it. But if we're on a location with stone, we can subtract one to that. And it looks like that's rope. If we had rope, it'd be another minus one. It then gives us an action here to put a fire figure into play on your terrain card and discard this. Oh, that can help us put fire. Cool. You see this is blue? We can have a total of three blue cards in our hand because this, this uh, satchel shows us on a two-player game the total amount we can have is three. Since we drew this card as an action resolution, we look to see how many stars we got. Well, we got one and a half. Halves don't count, so we got one star. We only needed zero, so we succeeded at investigating that cliff. So I'm going to place this into Dimitri's hand. We pull out the fifth card. You stand before a nearly 50-foot high rocky peak. And we'll place it right next to the cliff. Now this means this is going to be a permanent card that's here until we do something. We could potentially try and climb this rock. And we have to draw one plus cards in the action deck and get two successes. If we do, we draw card 026 and then discard this. But if we fail, we fall to the unforgiving uh, stony ground below. Each character involved takes a 104 wound card. And that is something else we can do. We can actually do things together. And then when we do things together, the nice thing is we can increase or decrease the amount of cards that we have to draw here, but then we have to increase the amount of successes. So we could put this at a 0-3 if we wanted to, if we decided to do that together. 
Of course, that would be really hard to draw zero cards and get three successes, but maybe at some point we could do that. Who knows? That ended Dimitri's turn, so now we have to decide what we want to do. We can have Dimitri go again. We can move to Keelan. This is a very open space that we're playing in. So I think we'll start with having, or next we'll have Keelan. She'll go and Pathfind for this card. Now, this card, and I'm going this way because of that map. It looks like we need to move to the left or west, so we might as well try it, right? So to do this Pathfinding action, we have to pay, or we have to uh, use zero plus action cards. Okay, so I'm not going to draw any because we don't need any successes either. So we don't have to do anything. We can just flip this Exploration card. Let's see what Keelan finds. She finds, uh-oh, a spider bite. Your calf is itching uncomfortably. Examining it, you notice a nasty red spot. You must have been bitten by a spider, and you can only hope it has not laid its eggs under your skin. Oh, that's gross. Now the only active player is forced to take the following action. So you see how this is red? We have to do this next. So we can draw zero cards, but we need to have zero plus, so we can always draw more. But we have to get two successes. And the little wound seems to heal nicely. That would be if we succeeded. But if we fail, eggs under your skin? Certainly not possible. Banish this. Huh, interesting. So it looks like if we fail at this, it doesn't even happen and we just banish this card, I think? Huh, that's, I'm kind of thinking I might do that because I don't really want to deal with this spider bite. <laughs> so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw zero cards. And here, let me show you guys this. So here we have a really nice player aid for action resolution. So to resolve this spider bite effect, we first look to see items. Anybody involved can use their items. Well, Keelan doesn't have any items, so we can ignore that. Then we determine the cost of the action. So the cost is zero for the skill amount. So zero plus. The amount of successes we need is two. After this, we draw as many cards as the action costs. You may draw more if the action is not, does not have this lock icon. So what we're going to do this time is we're not going to draw anything because it just looks like this is going to get banished and we don't have to worry about it later. So I'm just going to ignore this card. Eh, it's a spider bite. We would now have to reveal the cards during the cost step and count the amount of full stars. Uh, we don't have any stars, so we have failed. Total is less than required number of successes, failure. So we have failed. Then the active player may choose one skill card from that uh, that was revealed, and they can add it to his or her hand. But we didn't draw any, so we can't do any of that. Then we discard all other skill cards and any curse cards and uh, during this, this discard step. And then we have to discard any items that has a durability of zero. Lastly, we have to do the failure consequence since we failed. And then it says here, um, if more than one character is involved in the action, the active player dis, uh, takes a 100 card, a.k.a. they become paranoid. And then, of course, you always have to check your hand size limit. So what we're going to do for this one is eggs under your skin, certainly not possible, banish this. So we're going to banish this card. To do that, we'll place the banished card in the banished card area. Now we'll never see that card again unless something pulls it back out. One more thing I do want to mention. You see this icon right here? This means that once this card is resolved, now the terrain is going to be placed out in that location. The ground is totally barren here. In fact, the only vegetation among our surroundings are clumps of red seaweed clinging to the rocks. Plumes of yellowish smoke spurt from the ground from time to time, swirling around a dead seagull. Ooh, the seagull. Remember, we had something about a seagull in our clue here, so we should think about that, huh? Yeah, the piercing cries of a few seagulls. Oh, that's just the piercing cries. Maybe not. Maybe it doesn't matter. Who knows? We'll place this card right here, and it starts to create our island. Oh, I just love this art. Doesn't it look awesome? Now you can see there's three more lo or two more locations that we could go, and there needs to be an exploration card, so we'll draw those and place them. We'll place one right here and one right here. Before getting into board games, I was really into Zelda and Mario on the Wii. I loved doing all these exploration games. And what I love to do is explore every nook and cranny. And so it's really hard for me to think about these two cards and maybe moving on and not looking at them. Uh, I think I'm going to have to, but it might kill us because we might spend too much time doing that. So that's why I'm hoping that when we do this together, when I ask your guys' advice, you'll convince me to move on. Or maybe not. Who knows? But <laughs> for now, I think I am going to do a Pathfinder action here. And this time, 
Let's do Dimitri. So let's have Dimitri do a pathfind. The cost to do the pathfind action is zero and the success is zero. So we can just automatically succeed and we find hot stuff. There are fumaroles between you and your destination. You notice that the most numerous ones spurt their gas less frequently. Take a 045 card and apply consequences A if you decide to walk on the yellow holes or consequence B if you decide to walk on the white holes. So to me, I see a yellow, I see a yellow, I see a white. Oh man. So it looks like the yellow ones might be uh, erupting more often than the white just, just based on the picture. I don't know about you guys, but I love this game already. This is so cool. I, I think I'm going to go, I'm going to go white. Let's see if it works. You pause, watching the pattern of the venting steam. Trying to time your run, you dash towards the white ringed holes. The scalding steam does not shoot from the ground again until you are clear. Oh, <laughs> take one zero zero three card. Whenever a card says to take one of a type of card, you find all the cards that have the green backs that match that number, and you draw one at random. So I'm going to take these, I'm going to shuffle them up, and grab this one. A moment from your previous expedition comes to mind. Viho, your group's Cheyenne Pathfinder, had an amazing ability to spot paths to places that were otherwise unreachable. <laughs> How do they... That's just so perfect with what we just did. Okay. Ooh, experience point. I don't even know what that is. Okay, experience point one. Okay, this will go in our satchel. Examine terrain cards carefully. In addition to potentially hidden numbers, they may contain helpful hints, such as animal tracks suggesting the presence of wild game in the area. When you need to spend experience points, return this to spend one. Sweet. We'll place this experience card underneath our satchel. Nice. One experience down. We have now found terrain tile seven. Further to the north, the terrain slopes steadily down to the water. There's now more areas where we can go and investigate up here. We can go and explore over here. There's just so much to do. This cliff is just too tempting. I think I'm going to have Dimitri go and try and climb this cliff. Now, you have to draw at least one action card and get two successes. It's very likely you're not going to get two successes with one card. So I think I'm going to draw a total of two action cards to see if I can climb this cliff. Let's draw our two cards. One. Okay, we have one success. And two. <laughs> two successes. Perfect. So now what we get to do is decide which one of these two cards we want to keep. Do we want to keep the shovel or the woven, woven basket? I don't know, you guys. This is actually kind of hard to decide because this woven basket would let you add more items to a single item. So one of the things that you can do in this game is you can add items together. And if you put them together they're, they're, and they have the same keyword, um, so if they have stamina, so see how both of these have stamina? When I, If I added this woven basket to this shovel, this number four, which tells us our durability, how many times we could use it, could actually get increased to five. And then either time we use either the woven basket or the shovel, we decrease this by one. But you do that because you can only hold three items. And so being able to hold more items that are essentially put together is useful. But because we're playing with two players, we can only have the max of three items in one um, that could be put together. But that uh, woven basket can make that up to six for one, which would be awesome. But on the other hand, this shovel really helps with successes and lets you roll, uh, draw less skill cards. So how this lucky seven works is any card that when you draw for that resolution phase that has a seven on it, you get a success if you've used this shovel. So you can do that, or you can just draw two less cards for a specific action that you're doing that includes shovel, fighting, or unlocking, I think is what that one is. And I think because this has four uses, and I just really like shovels because it makes me think of Robinson Crusoe, <laughs> I'm going to have Dimitri keep the shovel. This woven basket then goes to the discard pile. That will actually be our first used card that hasn't gone to our hand. It's kind of sad. Since we succeeded, we get to draw 026 and discard this card. Finally, you make it to the top of the rocky peak. The ocean stretches as far as the eye can see in every direction. The volcanic island is only about half the mile long, and from what you have seen, the resources look too scarce for you to survive here more than a few days. Oh, well, that's great. And I'm out of breath. So we'll flip this card, and we see it says... 
you notice a path to the south, apparently free of any jettisoned steam. Constantly looking for an easier means of access, you carefully walk back down from the peak. We have this banish the terrain card you are standing on and replace it with the 010 card. So what I've noticed with some people when they, I have read about this game, we don't actually move on to this card when we pathfind it or we've climbed it. We're actually on this card. So what we're going to do is we're going to banish this card, and then we get to replace it with a 010, and I believe that's the gold one because there's only a gold one left. So we'll pop this up like so. Oh, cool. And then we'll discard this card. And now we can place another exploration card right here. And it looks like this is another way we can go and maybe avoid some of those fissures and whatnot. So I'm thinking that maybe we should be going this way instead of going this way because of what we saw on that cliff. Just how I read the card. So Dimitri now has two skill cards in his hand. So I think it's time that Keelan does something and hopefully Keelan can get something here. So she's going to pathfind in this location. I think we're going to try and avoid this area just because... It was saying, look at all these fissures. See, and I think the pictures matter in this game. It's not just for design. I think if we go through here, something bad's going to happen. There's fissures all the way around here. I think let's go this way. Granted, it looks like there's fissures here too, but let's pathfind here. So we'll flip this card. Keelan found a life jacket. You've laid hands on a life jacket in poor condition. Well, heck, poor condition or not, it has four durability, which is cool, and it can help us with one of these icons mean... You can see here all the different actions you can take. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to memorize those. This must be some sort of boating action or hammock action maybe, and then boating or uh, fighting action. Minus three, you can draw minus three less, but then you have to banish it. Or you can reduce the durability by one here to do a minus one on any of these actions. Or this just gives you one success. And what's nice is this is immediately available to her. Since it's not from the action deck, she doesn't have to craft it. It's already there and ready for her. Progression in this direction is hampered by many jets of boiling steam. It seems you have to take a steep path to reach the ocean that you can see below. <laughs> so apparently I read that wrong, you guys. I thought we should go this way and not so much. Look at that. There's a lot of steam coming from over here. So maybe we're going to avoid that one? I don't know. Just kind of giving you the backup shot of what we have explored so far. I think the next thing that we are going to do is move onto this tile. And we're going to do this action together. To do this action, it costs zero of our action cards and we need a zero success. So we can just automatically succeed. We'll both move from here to here. Now I think Dimitri's going to do something. You see how there's stone available in this area. We're going to craft this shovel because who knows when we might need to start digging. And I kind of like this shovel. And we've got uh, a stone, which will help us. Because right now, to craft it, it would take we'd have to use three of our action cards. We need zero successes, so we'd automatically succeed. But with this rock, because there's rock here, it's minus two. So we only have to draw one adventure card, and we'll get to keep it. So I'm, I'm trying not to waste adventure cards or action cards. So let's draw it. Ooh, and we got knowledge is power. So actually, technically, we didn't even get a star. You see this? We have a seven and a half star. So we would have failed anything else. Now, if we want to, we can actually do an action with this Knowledge is Power card. With this card, we could take a Think action. And this one, we can only draw one card. But if we get a success, we become more experienced, which is cool. We could just get more and more experience. But if we fail, each involved character must discard all Knowledge is Power cards they have in hand and discard this. Ooh. Okay. Well, we'll put this in our hand, but we have now crafted our shovel. So our shovel is available for use. So because of this map, it looks like we need to continue going to the left, I think. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to have Keelan go and uh, a pathfind this card. So we'll flip it over and see what's over here. And we get lunch. Okay. A plump seagull is hopping around just a few yards from you. If you are a vegetarian, just ignore it. <laughs> That's awesome. We could, if we wanted, to try and hunt this now. If we did, we would get. We need to have two successes on one card, and we can't change that. That isn't going to happen. And if we succeed, we grab a 001 card and banish this. If we fail, the seagull flies away and immediately discard this. Or we can just do a pathfind. You can go on your way, leave it alone, and discard this. Well, we've only discarded one card. From what I understand, hunting helps you get cards from your discard pile back into your action deck. And 
I don't think we need to do that right now. So I'm just going to have her take another action here to just simply discard this. We're going to do a, a path find, go around this, discard it so we can see what's in this location. The terrain is split in two by a small bay. Hmm. Okay. Oh, the waves break and crash loudly against the jagged rocks. Getting to the other side is not going to be an easy task. We can try and do a balance action to draw three cards and get one success. If we succeed, put a 017 or a 009 card into play in the space shown, unless it's already there. Each involved character moves their figure onto it. But if we fail, we're exhausted and decide to turn back. Before the waves smash you into the rocks, each involved character takes a 101 card. Probably some sort of wound. I think before we do this, because this isn't required that we do this next, we're going to have Keelan go and explore over here. What's over here? I have made a determination you can't do everything, right? And you see all these fissures here? We could try and search here, but I don't know. Something tells me something bad's going to happen there. I think they put this art, this fissure art here for a reason. I could be wrong. I could be totally missing something, but let's do it. So instead, we're going to do just kind of a lookout here. Now, we have to draw one action card, get zero successes. So I'm just going to have um, Keelan draw one card, and she gets to keep whatever this is. Oh, this is cool. She gets the think action. So she can randomly take up to seven cards from the action deck, add one of these uh, blue skill cards into her hand, and then shuffle the rest back into the action deck. And then we can discard this. Oh, that is going to be awesome for later. So I will keep this card. We get bright red seaweed is clinging tightly to the rock. Perhaps it is edible. You tear a piece of seaweed and it gives you a taste. As soon as your tongue starts to tingle, you spit it out immediately. However, its flexible and strong stem might prove useful. Immediately after this is revealed, take a 029 card from the adventure deck if available. A 029 card right here is red seaweed. The stem of this red seaweed is both flexible and strong. It could easily be crafted into some nice cordage or as a component in other equipment. When this seaweed can be seen on your terrain card, you have the vine resource. <gasps> cool! Oh, that was that, um, that's what we needed before. I can't remember which one of these things. Oh, yes, the woven cord. I think that's a vine, I think. If we have a vine, then we can put this woven cord out for free. Cool. We get to leave this card here, I believe, because that means it's a permanent card and it doesn't tell us to discard it. And then, under our satchel, we'll place this seaweed. Hopefully I don't forget that. Maybe you guys can help me remember it. Okay, before moving on, we just we have to see what this is. <laughs> I can't go without doing this. I'm going without doing this. I'm impressed I'm doing that. Let's see and reveal this card. So let's have um, Keelan again do a pathfind action. And we get sea urchins. The ground is covered with hundreds of little reddish creatures that look like sea urchins. You will have to tiptoe through the colony if you want to continue this way. Each character getting involved in the following action may discard any number of cards with the keyword skill from their hand and or inventory. For each card discarded this way, you get one success during the result step. So it looks like we would have to do one plus cards to get two successes. We potentially would have to discard a skill card to be able to do it. And I don't even know if we need to go that way. I'm just going to leave this here, and we can always come back and do this. But I just don't feel like it's worth it. I think instead, let's start trying to do our balancing act over here. So I think we're going to do our balance or jump action over here to try and get across. So, and we're going to do it together, which means we're going to draw three cards and try and get one success. Now, I'm doing this with two people, so I could decrease this three to a two, and then we'd have to get two successes. But I just, you know, we haven't drawn a curse card yet. I think I'm going to leave it as is and draw three cards for one success. Who knows? This could be wasteful. Let's see. So we have... Oh my gosh, that was totally awesome. Here's a curse, so that's one fail. Our second one, okay, that gives us one and a half stars, so we just need a half star on this third one. Oh my gosh, too bad we wasted that. We have three successes, three, and we got rid of this curse card, one of the five. Wow, that was perfect timing. So I could take either this club with aggressiveness as the keyword or this bow with a will. But remember, Dimitri has an ability that he can discard aggressiveness cards to help prevent negative effects from those uh, status cards. So I think we're going to have him keep this club in hand. And unfortunately, we have to discard the bow, but we'll discard the bow and the curse. 
We get to put a 17 or a 9 card into play in the space shown, unless it's already there. So if you look here, the 017 is on this side. I think that's the only one that we can do, so let's grab a 017 card. A 30-foot-long submarine is hanging from two cranes, keeping it above the surface of the water. There's not a soul in sight. Whoa, our first human-made thing. Interesting. Okay, we'll put this like so. Okay, what I'm not sure about you guys, and we can always make a correction since I am going to be doing this um, piecemeal, is doing this jump action makes me feel like we should actually move on here, unlike other actions, which you'd actually have to do a move action. So I think I don't have to do a move action. I jumped, essentially, or balanced my way to this tile. And I did use both characters, so we're both over here. If that's wrong, though, let me know. Now, what's interesting is this is cut off here so I don't know if I went the right way here but I, I kind of want to see what this submarine is because this is a humanoid thing so I think what I'm going to do is have Dimitri take the examine action here because see now he's got a card with aggressiveness so he could potentially prevent any state card he draws now if you look here this says uh, zero successes and zero cards we need to draw so we can just find the card 22 the cranes support the submarine above the water by chains attached to either end. Hmm. Each chain runs through the pulley located at the top of a crane. Lowering and submerging the submarine obviously requires great precision and skill. We could do a pull-push effect here. The chain does not break. The submarine is back into the water. Return the train card you are standing on and replace it with a 024. <sighs> Oh boy. I think that this is how we're going to get off the island. So maybe I did go the right way. If you guys see this here, there's some graves here. Being that I'm kind of more of a, of a religious individual, I would like to do this pray action to pray for whoever's there. This will take one skill card. Now, the thing is that um, Dimitri already has his three blue hand skill cards. So I'm going to have Keelan do it so that she can maybe get another skill card that's useful to her. So she's going to draw this card. We need zero successes, so she'll succeed no matter what. We get forewarned is forearmed. You may discard this during the result step of an action you are involved in in order to apply the following effect. Oh, that's awesome. This means we can be a little more risky because she can discard this at the result step to then get one success. Oh, yes. See, praying does work out, you guys. You come across two marked graves, very likely the crew of the submarine. The ground here is very rocky, and whoever tried to bury them here appears to have attempted to dig a proper grave before giving up and covering the bodies with stones in the form of a cairns. You meditate for a while, pondering the demise of the deceased while hoping to avoid their fate. Immediately after this card is re revealed, take a 666 card. Oh gosh, that does not sound good. And after resolving it, apply the following effects. For each curse card in the discard pile, randomly take two cards from the discard pile and shuffle them back into the action deck. Oh, that, that is awesome. This has got to be irony that they use the number 666. They've got to do that on purpose. Let's take this one. A veil of fog mysteriously forms around the grave. Oh boy. It coalesces into a thin, frail form that points a ghostly finger in your direction. Yeah, <laughs> see, this is it. The spirit lets out a harsh, shrill cry before vanishing as inexplicably inexplic as it appeared. We now have to do this think action, but before doing that, I'm going to also resolve the other card before doing this. But, but we'll have to do this next. We have to draw one or zero cards, zero or more, and we have to have one success. If we fail, we take a 103 card. So you guys, we have one curse card in here. So for each curse card, we randomly take two cards from the discard pile and shuffle them back into the deck. Well, there's only three in here right now. Two of them are good and one is bad. So that's, that's not terrible. So let's shuffle these up like so. I have no idea. We'll do this one and this one. But that must mean that we have to keep this one face down. Otherwise, we'd know if we put the curse back in. Eh, that's how I'm going to play it. So I'm going to put this face down. I don't know what I've added into the deck. Here's our deck. I'll put one here. I'll split it, put one in the middle, and then I'll just mess these bad boys up a little bit. I'm pretty sure I had to do that before doing this because we could maybe redraw the curse card that we would potentially just put back into the deck or whatnot. So let's see. Keelan doesn't exactly want to take a 103 card. I don't even know what that is. I'm assuming it's maybe like the paranoid or the wound or something like that. I don't want that. So should I draw one card or two cards? You know what? She has that automatic success in her hand. Let's take a chance. 
Let's just draw one card from the deck. Yes! Oh, we get one star. We succeeded. And we get to keep this deadfall trap in our hand. But this is our third blue skill card, so I think we're going to have to get rid of some so we can keep drawing. You blame your extreme fatigue for this hallucination. <laughs> yeah, totally. I'm just exhausted, you guys. That's why. There's one more thing we can do on this plot of land, and that is to go and explore up here. I think I'm going to do that before doing the submarine, just in case. So I think I'm going to have Dimitri do that. So we'll have Dimitri go and explore. He has to draw one card from the action deck and get a zero success. Ooh, we got Rudimentary Flint. This one, well, you can put a fire figure into play on your terrain card. You have to do a one and one success. It only has one durability. But I think I'm going to keep that over this um, woven cord flint because, first of all, it has the aggressiveness symbol. And second of all, I can only hold three blue cards, and I have these two already. So we'll take this rudimentary flint into our hand and discard woven cord. You gaze upon the wild, endless ocean. The surf is rough and choppy, and the salty spray from the waves is enough to tell you that the water is freezing. A.K.A. we can't go swimming. Swimming away will certainly not be easy. On the other hand, if you stay here for more than a few days, you will likely die. Oh my gosh. This might be how we leave. <laughs> this stair icon, that means that all players have to take that action together, which is cool. Okay. We have to draw seven cards and get 11 successes. Oh my gosh, but then the strong current carries you far to the north. Each character takes a 102 card, unless at least one character uses a card with the keyword craft from their inventory. <gasps> Maybe we have to get the submarine. Okay, this is going to be insane. I think, I mean, we've got a light ja life jacket as well, which should be able to help us succeed at this. So I think what I'm going to do first is go to the submarine, see if I can get that. Maybe that'll give us a craft, and then do this. Oh, yes, but you guys, this means I did the right thing, I think. I avoided spending and wasting time on the island over there, and now it's paying off. Of course, that's all just my guess. <laughs> I have really have no idea. Both Keelan and Dimitri are going to go and take care of the submarine. So they're going to try and do this pull push. They need one success, and they only get to draw one card, and they're doing this together. So we'll draw our one. Holy moly. Oh, my goodness. I'm just getting so lucky. Look at this. Two successes. And then you may discard this card during your result step of an action you were involved in in order to apply the following successes. Two guaranteed successes and take a 101 card. Yeah, we're definitely keeping that. I think we're going to have Keelan do that. Keelan's going to discard this Think card, which is a bummer. I probably should have done that, but I don't know what cards are even in the action deck. So whatever. This is two successes. Definitely taking this one into hand. So because we did this, we get to return the train card that we're standing on and replace it with 024. The submarine is in the water. Now set off as quickly as you can. You never know what could happen. <laughs> what? We're not going to be able to do the other way? Really? Okay, well, we flip this. Cool. We'll put our guys back here. Well, and so now there's a 037 spot. So maybe maybe that's what we're supposed to do? Oh, gosh. Well, because the submarine's in the water. We need to get in there, I, I guarantee you. Because this is giving us that craft action. So, yeah. L okay, let me back it up. Here's our little island so far. I think we're good. We've moved off. I ignored a ton of stuff on here. That was good. Now the question is, do we try and swim away or do we go and search here for another sum for that submarine? I'm thinking the submarine, but I'm curious what you guys think. So I'm actually, I'm going to stop it here, and you guys can put in the comments what you guys think. I'm going to take a picture of this, and in the next day or so, we'll continue on the adventure. I hope you guys are liking this so far. I am loving this. This is so fun. I, I, I don't even know how to explain it. I think it's the fact that you don't know what's coming. That's what's making it so enjoyable. So who knows? Maybe later I'll go, eh. But right now I'm going, ooh. <laughs> all right. Thank you all so much for watching.